Hello everybody, thanks again for joining me on another episode of Fly Fish Dan. I've got an exciting announcement. I'm gonna start a new series. Every single Friday, we're gonna sit down and we're gonna talk about new fly fishing gear. It might be new to you, it might be new to the industry, it might be new to me, but we're gonna talk about some of the cool things in the fly fishing industry, and we're gonna do it every Friday. And we're gonna do it either over a cocktail or something refreshing or a beer. I haven't quite figured out what I wanna call it yet. Maybe it's gears and beers. I think Peter McKinnon already has that, so maybe I can do a fly fishing version of that, like fly fishing gear and beers gear and cheers i don't know i haven't quite figured out what i want to name it yet so maybe you can give me some ideas down in the comments of what you'd like to see but every friday we're going to sit down and we're going to talk about new fly fishing gear or gear that's just cool to me that i might want to share with you so it's kind of funny as i started out i have a fishing room at home and it was a mess i mean a big mess and i spent all saturday cleaning that thing up and then I sat down to kind of do a lighting check and kind of see what it felt like. <laughs> I have to tell you, it just felt really awkward sitting there and talking to a camera. Yeah, I don't know. This just uh, <laughs> feels just weird. So I decided, you know what? I'm going to go to my family's little retreat, someplace that I've done a lot of videos at. I'm comfortable here and it's not this weird kind of studio setting. So I thought, you know what? The first episode, I'll start here at our lake trailer. So pretty excited about that. So before we start getting into any gear, I do want to share a story that happened here not very long ago. So I sometimes work south and I came down here to kind of get in between so I don't have to drive so far in. And I got some groceries and it was a little bit windy and I thought, you know, I'm, I'm going to park the car right up close by the trailer and unload my groceries and then send it out. Because a lot of times, branches from these massive trees, these, these things are like 100 years old, will come down in a windstorm. So as you can see, we have the metal roof over the trailer to help protect that. But there's nothing protecting your car. So I backed it up in the field and I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to pull it forward, quickly unload it because it started to rain. And then this, this unbelievable torrential wind sound started coming up from the lake and through the forest. I kid you not, I was standing on the deck when this thing hit. I could hear trees and branches breaking. It was unbelievable. Well, this massive gust hits, hits the trailer and all hell breaks loose. I mean, I'm standing on the deck right behind me and I'm literally ducking thinking, you know, and I think to myself, why am I ducking, right? If one of these monster trees comes down, it's going to literally squash me. That steel roof will handle the branches, but it will not handle one of these full-size trees. But all chaos broke loose, right? This big old branch fell on my car and just caused a lot of damage and a lot of dents. And then this massive, huge series of branches fell in the backyard and just literally squashed everything. Hit the wood pile roof, squashed the little bench that I have and sitting in front of this fireplace, squashed our outdoor furniture, tore down the tarp, and the thunderous war roar that it made was really quite unbelievable. So I'm happy to be here shooting this video again. And now that it's all cleaned up, I can relax and hopefully... Uh, hopefully avoid any type of uh, big situations like that on the next windstorm because that was pretty scary. Okay, enough stories. Let's do the most important part of this entire series right now. So you're gonna learn that I'm kind of an IPA man. I do enjoy IPAs, love them, and I try to support the local breweries. And one that I recently visited down in Bend <laughs> is so good. I just love Deschutes IPA freshly squeezed. And yes, you know, I don't mind. I can drink it out of a can, but I also prefer a nice chilled glass. So let's pour ourselves a beer and start talking about some gear. All right, I got to do this right here. So I don't want a bunch of foam. A little ash is okay, but no foam. All right, cheers. Mm. That is a good IPA. Seriously, if you haven't tried to shoot freshly squeezed, especially on tap, it's really good. Mm -hmm. All right, so the first thing we're gonna talk about, I've done some videos on this in the past. Fly fishing nets aren't new, but this particular net 
It is really unique and like nothing else I've seen out there in the marketplace. I did a little video short on these a while ago when my wife actually discovered this company, bought this net for Christmas, and it is now my favorite net. It is really a great net. It's beautiful, it's functional, and it's got a lot of good fish karma. So I'm gonna go over three, 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 hold up the right fingers. I haven't had too much of that beer yet, but you know, I'm already starting to get mixed up on how many fingers to hold up. So, and again, I wanted to highlight these nets because A, they're a family owned business. There's just two people that own this business and JD does these incredible jobs on these custom nets. And I was very fortunate. He sent me some exclusive footage of what it's like when he's got to bend these big circles of bamboo. It's, it's pretty incredible. I'll let you see for yourself. Now that takes some strength to bend the bamboo. So pretty, pretty incredible stuff. So let's talk about the upstream first. So the upstream is what I typically have hanging off of my sling pack. It's lightweight. It has a long enough handle to handle most fish, a nice big basket for, for most fish. I've caught some five pounders in this thing and they fit, but it's typically for any fish that ranges from, you know, the smallest fish up to, up to about two or three pounds. It could handle a 20 inch fish pretty well. But what really makes these nets unique is one, they're made out of bamboo, right? I've never seen a custom net made out of bamboo. JD, who makes these nets, fires the bamboo. You can kind of see it's heat treated. He kind of burns it to kind of give this really cool look. And the netting is all held on by these little copper straps. You can have black netting or clear netting. I kind of gone clear, I kind of like that. Maybe one day I'll get a black net. And it's got a copper catch and that is where you hang your net off of and what's unique about this copper catch is it's continuous it goes all the way through the handle and wraps all the way around the net so at no point can this come off and then falling off and you end up losing your net so that is something that's really unique about these nets that if you hook this on it's going to stay on whatever it is you hooked it onto. so that design really is pretty amazing, pretty clever, and pretty innovative when it comes to fly fishing nets. Now I know you can get a fiberglass net that has something that's likely never gonna fall off, but having a wooden net with a type of system to hold it in place that cannot come off or cannot break off really is pretty innovative. So I really enjoy this net. It's, it truly is my, my new favorite fly fishing net. So now let's talk about the downstream. So the downstream, as you can see, it has a similar size basket. It's a little bit bigger, so it can handle easily a 24 inch trout. And it has a really long handle. Now the cool thing about this particular net is no net, no two nets are the same, right? They all look a little bit different because bamboo has different characteristics in itself. And I have ash in my forehead. Let me get rid of that there. So I don't, I don't want it to be distracting for you. So no two nets are, are lookalikes, right? These are all custom made. And just another really nice net. You can see there's some firing on this net as well. It's a little bit darker. I like this net as well. It really does work well in, uh, for my kayak. So I've got the short handled one that hangs off my sling pack. And I've got this long handled one specifically for the kayak. You can also customize the length of the handle. So if you need something even longer, JD will pick out the perfect piece of bamboo to make your custom net for you. All right, before we go on to the next net. Mm -hmm. So the next net, now this is new for Hellbender. It is the Brookie. This is really a nice small net. So it is far smaller than the upstream and really is designed for high elevation, small brook trout, small rainbow trout, small cutthroat trout. This is for if you're hiking way up in the mountains or you're fishing one of those small streams on the East Coast or even here on the West Coast that you know just have the smaller fish in it. This is a great compact net, fits in a backpack really easy, super lightweight, and again, completely custom. This thing was made exactly for me. And you notice it also has that copper catch on the end. So even with this copper, I mean, it is super light. It's, it's under a pound at least. Nice netting again. So it's just this great little net. Again, no affiliate program. There's no benefit to me in highlighting these nets except for supporting a family owned company. 
and JD and Bailey are great people from South Carolina uh, and are just doing a fantastic job with this little upstart and making these custom nets. I cannot wait to see where this business takes them. So really, really appreciate supporting them. And I thank you in advance for supporting them as well. Hellbender Nets, awesome nets. And I'm just getting ashed to death by this fire. <laughs> All right, well, I hope you enjoyed the very first episode of Beers and Gears, Fly Fishing Gears and Beers. You know, if you have an idea, again, for the name of this particular show or episodes or every Friday thing that we do, I'd love to hear your thoughts. All right, everybody, until the next time, thanks for joining me and, and cheers. I've got to stop talking so much so I can enjoy the beer. So now I'm just going to sit here and do that. All right. See you guys. Mm-hmm.